victim, 28 years old, found in a comatose state after trying to discover all the planets in no man's sky. Poor bastard. What the fuck was that? Mother of God. Oh shit, zombie! Oh, fuck! Getting really drunk. I mean, relatively drunk. Um, so, uh, what, what else is going on? Well, on this week's episode, since it's our first one and it's technically the new year, we're going to do our top three games, respectively, of 2017. Yes. And uh, I believe we have an alcohol sponsor for this episode. We do. So, since it is us technically bringing in the new year, you guys are probably going to catch this episode after the new year. We figured we should pop some champagne, but uh, we're cheap and broke and we like beer. So we have the champagne of beers. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we'd like to thank Miller for not doing anything to sponsor this episode besides me buying this at the Roger Wilco down the street. So, uh, so uh, Bill, yeah, uh, please. Cheers, Mazel Tov. Ah, man. I mean, honestly, like, so, I'm like the worst beer snob in the world. I um I, I work at a brewery. I love craft beer. I yeah. love, love a nice stout. I love an IPA. I love a nice porter. Everything like that in between. But there's nothing better than like a nice cheap crisp yes. beer. Yeah, it, it really isn't. Well, the, for me, stout, stouts and porters, it's just too much. Like people mm-hmm. say, wait till winter. Right? Yeah. yeah. See, and, and i and I've been drinking stouts pretty religiously because of winter. Um. But I, I, I don't know, man. Sometimes I just want to, like, kick back with a six-pack of Miller. Like, or a PBR. Or there's nothing wrong with PBR. <laughs> there really isn't. So, like, don't be ashamed to, to drink cheap beers. Not everyone has to be a super hipster that only drinks IPAs made from, like, you know, like, juniper berries and elderberries and shit like that. Or leaves I didn't know they even existed. Yeah, exactly. There you go. What's coriander? Mm. Isn't it, like, one of those purple things? No, that's lavender, actually. Yeah. Okay. So, um... So, let's get into the news. We're going to start the episode off right. And uh, for the news, and since we're doing our top three of 2017, I figure for the news, a better way to jump into it, we're going to do the top ten uh, games as listed by Time.com. So, it's not like Time Magazine even has a legitimate yeah. opinion. Yeah, how, how would that work? But see, I chose that because instead of like the IGNs and the, and the Kotakus and the Machinimas, 90% of those sites are getting paid off by publishing companies, yes. you know? And I feel like time doesn't have anything invested in the video game. And also, I feel like IGN or some of them will go more obscure, like, oh, this was fun, but the multiplayer and this is what made it special. Like, that's not what everyone yeah. technically focuses on. Yeah, so like, so time was like, you know, time is a real middle of the road, like, company that has nothing to do with video gaming. So their top 10 list is going to be pretty, you know, objectionable. So uh, I'll go right through. Number yeah. 10, Destiny 2. You need to give it a try. Nine Horizon Zero Dawn. You need to give it a try. I need the PlayStation. Uh, yeah, I, everyone needs a PlayStation. Um, eight Mario plus Rabbits Kingdom Battle. I'm not gonna go out of my way to play that game. It, I'm gonna tell you right now. It, it sounds like an underground punk band almost. <laughs> well, like, and, and real quick, like, uh, like the the Raving Rabbits, which the Raving Rabbits are just a character from what what, what game? Um, not Rayman. One of those old fucking games, right? The 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 rabbits were like a, a enemy in a game. Oh, you're probably here. You, you know what I'm talking right. about? It then, sounds familiar. I can't picture it. And the then they right made now. Raving Rabbids, and that was a big game, and everyone loved it. It was a great game. And now they're crossing over with Mario. So, I mean, I guess that probably is a, it's probably the, the most fun fucking game in the world, and I'm bragging. It's, it's Nintendo loving money. Yeah, so, uh, okay, so number seven, player in a battleground, PUBG. Oh, God, who doesn't play that game? Yeah, yeah. Reese doesn't play that game. Six, Cuphead. Fuck that game. Yeah. The, what did you call it? The, the, the Dark the, Souls of Platformers. Yes, indeed. Number five, Persona 5, which is great, number five. Uh, RPG, uh, you know, um, it's, a, it's a series that's standalone like Final Fantasy and other games really intersect. Okay, I've heard great things. Uh, number four, Wolfenstein 2. I've heard nothing but great things. Same, same. 
What remains of Edith Finch for number three? I don't know. It, what would you say? Something new? Acacia Strain album? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, sounds like, it sounds like one of your new singles on here. Yeah. You're trying to sneak it in. Yeah. Number two, which I'm not surprised that this is on here, Super Mario Odyssey. I've heard nothing but great games about that either. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Nintendo really doesn't do many things wrong. And number one, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, speaking of Nintendo. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, I've met new people who beat it in the first month. I knew people who beat it in the first two weeks. Yeah. But they're like, I need to go back and get so-and-so character and do it on this difficulty. And, and, you have fun. Yeah, and those Nintendo games have such replay value. Now, I, I got to ask, now... I know some of mine were. Were any of your top three on the top seven? They were not. They were not. No. So that, and that's cool. I like that. That's that's really cool. Sad, but no, they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Time, time that kind of not judging your choices of video games. I'd probably have to go to an obscure site to find my top. Mm. Uh. Feel good no matter what. Yeah, yeah. Another fun little topic we're going to do every now and then is... Uh, What's buzzing with you, sir? Oh, so what is buzzing with me? Um, you know, honestly, honestly, what's buzzing with me, and it's cool to take this time to, to talk about it, is this show. Like, this is literally, literally is what has been occupying my life for, for the last, like, two, three weeks. Um, in between, you know, having meeting. When was our first meeting? Probably about two months ago? Uh, it was two weeks before Christmas. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we, uh, you know, we, we met at a local bar, and, like, because, so, here's the thing, you know, I've been doing podcasting for years, I, I do a movie podcast where we're reviewing erotic thrillers with friends of mine, I uh, started off uh, R&S podcast with my homegirl Stacy, love you Stacy, um, and then I also am now doing Black Mirror Reflections, which we did a Black Mirror review podcast, and like, I remember, like, like I've known Bill for years, do music, from, uh, from, from being in a band, stuff like that. And he was like, dude, we should do a gaming podcast because we have a lot of the same interests and the same likes of games, but at the same time... Well, most of the time it would be me yeah. messaging you, but we bonded over Mass Effect. Mass Effect, right? yes, yeah. And yeah. I picked you like, which way did you go? And then you would tell me the yeah. other way, and I'd tell you my way, you're like, ah, I was going to go that way, but I got really into the headspace of the character, and I'm like, you went all out. <laughs> yeah. Then it started with Telltale, and then we went from Oh, that. yeah, yeah. And, and what they say, the rest of they say is, uh, is history. Yes. But I, so, like... Months ago, probably six months ago, around there, uh, we, we were talking, and he was like, you know what, dude, well, we should do a game podcast. And like in the back of my mind, I was like, you know what, that'd be really fucking awesome. And like, neither of us like at the time, like really, like I knew I wanted to do something like that. And and Bill obviously he brought it up, so he wanted to do something like that. But I remember like a couple months passed, and I like you you hit me up again. Yeah. You were like, you're like, by the way, man, you still want to do the podcast? I was like, you know what? I do want to do that podcast. Then you mentioned, let's go meet a purple and sit down. Yeah. And I went, oh, shit, this is your action. Okay. <laughs> like, this is going to actually happen. And, you know, I we, we like, you know, we just jumped on the, the, the bandwagon and did it. You know, I, you know, I, I got the, the camera and, you know, we, we got the book and domain name, which, oh, my God, what's buzzing with me is me ripping my hair out and texting you at 2 o'clock oh in the morning. God. I'm like, the website's up and working. And you're like, no, it's not. <laughs> And then an hour later, you were about to text me. Why don't you just type the name into your browser? I went, all right, Reese, it works. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's really what's been encompassing uh, my life. Uh, besides work and everything else that's crazy is going on, on on online store and shit I do. This podcast is like, this is our brainchild, and we're, yes, we're, we're glad, glad to bring it to you. I, I want to say what's buzzing with me is about the same. I've been trying to not tell as many people. Mm. I would honestly walk up the street and be like, hey, I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> Yeah, it's just I was so excited. Like a couple of my friends know, my girlfriend knows, of course. She already just went, yeah, I'll, I'll listen to it. I'm not going to have a clue what the fuck you're talking about, but I'll listen. I went, I'll take it. Yeah. I know you're just saying that to make you feel better. <laughs> but um, no, the same thing as like work and then this, like texting all this week yeah, just to get everything yeah, up and yeah. running. The random ideas for topics. Yeah. Like, oh. Man, it's it's been a fun week. Well, it's been a fun three weeks, really, just getting... And get it to this point. So yeah. uh yeah, so we are uh, yeah, we are uh, we hope you guys are enjoying it as much as we enjoy doing it. Okay. And uh that you know, that's really like the, the, the most fun part of it. It's only it. gonna go up from here. Yeah, yeah, seriously. It can only get better. Cheers. Dilly yes. dilly. Dilly <laughs> dilly. <laughs> mm. So without much further ado, let's get right into this week's main topic, which is uh the top three games of twenty seventeen. I um when we first got together we 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 had a first sit down we we buzzed like ideas back and forth about what was gonna be our topics and stuff like that and 
we, we realized we wanted to have like a nice like half hour to hour format and we're like what's a good way to do that like you know like what about like top three list and then we met right around the end of the year so the first thing that came to my mind was like dude we could talk about our th- three favorite games of 2017 mm-hmm you know, it's relative, you know, we're still in January, and anybody that, um, you know, is a gamer will be able to reflect off of our opinions and see how much they suck, and then <laughs> you can leave your opinions in the comments and email us and tell us how much of our opinions suck and how much yours are better than ours. Um, I can't wait for that. Yeah, that's going to be the best that's part. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, so Bill, you, go ahead and start it off. You, you tell me your, your number three, and let's, let's hash it out. My number three is The Walking Dead The New Frontier from mm-hmm. Telltale Games, okay. which you could technically say started in 2016, mm. but since the episodes take forever and ever to come out, which I just go, oh, there's really kind of update the story, it did technically finish in 2017. It's one of my favorite games. The whole Telltale series is my favorite from Walking Dead because it's it, it makes me honestly care about the characters more than I do about the ones on the show. Yeah. That first season is the most heart wrenching season. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you you, you go because I want to interject so much because you know how much oh, the yeah. Walking Dead series means to me. And we <laughs> that's another thing we started talking about with that. Like, who did you save? Him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you saved him? Fuck him. He's an asshole. <laughs> um, but no, the New Frontier. You don't get to play as the normal Clem, which you only got to play as her as the second time. She doesn't come in until. Part way through yeah, episode so, one. So for any of the viewers and listeners, uh, he's talking about Clem, which is short for Clementine, who, um, she's a main character in season one, and she becomes the protagonist and the main character for, for season two, and into three, you're like, all right, so more adventures with Clem, yeah. and like... <laughs> and you start off with this, uh, I, I don't... I want to say the Spanish family. Yeah, his his family. You yeah, well, his Hispanic family. family. They, I don't think they ever said what no. his, with uh, Hispanic culture they they were from. It starts off. It seems to be like the night of the infection. I guess. Did you never, you never, with Walking Dead, you never really get what, what it is. It, it takes it back, and that's one thing that's cool for anyone who doesn't know, the Walking Dead Telltale games, they coexist with the Walking Dead comic book and television series. Actually, more the comic. Like, Glenn has appeared, he appeared in season yes, one, Michonne yeah. has appeared, Herschel mm-hmm. has appeared. Yeah, Michonne actually has her own spin-off game, which, which is also good. A, a, spe- a period of time in the comics, Michonne disappears. And they did a game that takes up that span. So it actually, the backstory is all canon. Robert Kirkman helped write and produce the video game. So that's really one of the awesome things about the Walking Dead games. But this one starts off here with this Hispanic family, and it's how it begins for them. And you're honestly sitting there for a good portion of time going, all right, where's Clem? Yeah, yeah. I'll just, and then I'll bite my nails. <laughs> and then fast forward to the future where it's still this Hispanic family, but some are missing, Yeah. obviously. Mm-hmm. And you find this junkyard, and... You find out it's not as deserted as you once thought. Mm. And the gang takes you, and as they're about to do their business with you, Clem shows up and saves you. And it just goes from there. I do not want to give away any more of the game, because I believe everyone should go play these games. Because it's honestly one of my favorite in general. If, if, you, if you like storytelling, man, I, I gotta tell you, you want a game that pulls at your heartstrings, go oh. back to season one of Walking Dead. Uh, the characters they build, especially season one, so much like you're you're gonna walk out and care so much. You you may shed tears. I was I was at, I was in the that ending man. That, oh, that, that, ending. that oh. ending. I mean, and I don't I don't want to spoil anything, but like you said, go play the games. If you are yes. a gamer and you like storytelling, go back and play uh, the Walking Dead series. This is not one of those ones where you need the skills. Like you don't mm-hmm. have to have all combos and all that. You just. Yeah. Choose dialogue, choose certain actions, and yeah, I mean, and the like, story yeah, adapts for you. That's what's so cool, because this game, for uh, people that haven't played it, it they're like they're like kind of like your choose-your-own-adventure style yeah. of games. Um, and so the gameplay isn't like, you know, shoot this guy in the head, shoot this zombie, you like grab this bat, and do it. It's more you're playing a story where your choices change the outcome of your past. And, you know... Some people complain that you don't have enough freedom with those games. There are some quick actions. There are quick actions, uh, yeah. Uh, what, what are they called? QTEs? Yeah, quick, quick time events. Yes. Uh, there, there's, some, there's some QTEs. Um, people complain that, you know, these games don't really, like, your, your karma-based games and then your uh, choice games are like, oh, I'll just really leave the same thing. You can argue that one way or the other. One thing with the Walking Dead game, it really doesn't matter, I don't think, because I think the stories are so fucking cool oh, yeah. that... They're so in-depth. They're so in-depth, and you care so much about what's going on with these characters. I don't think it makes a difference if there's really drastically that much of no. a change in the actual story as you play through it, because it's all awesome. All right, I, I'm 
very curious of your number three. My number three. You I, didn't even let me see your list. Yeah, yeah. My my number three. <laughs> and I, I had to close. I hold my cards close to my chest. Was uh, Destiny Two. Destiny Two. Um, released uh, September six. Uh, was a multi-platform game. Uh, it's by Bungie, the uh, famed uh, uh, creators of the Halo series, which is where they made all their fucking bank from. Uh, I'm not. I'm gonna start this off. I've never truly been a Halo fan. I, you know, <laughs> I need a drink before, before, I, before I get into this. <laughs> one was amazing. I remember there's one and two. I have certain. I can't levels. say the games are bad. I no, 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 no. Fate. One and two are amazing because yeah. I, I have my certain levels where you get like you try to try the warthog the whole level, and then mm. I think in two there's one where you get like the ghost and you get to fly the banshee around. Yeah. Three and all that. Where I just kind of started just forgetting what the story was. Yeah. There is the gaps in between. Yeah. And then they tried to like branch up with other games. The, 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 the standalone. Well, see, I played ODST and I actually loved ODST because ODST in the Halo series, you weren't Master Chief for once. You weren't yeah. the unstoppable force. You were just like foot soldiers. I mean, in the ODST squad were badass dudes, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But they weren't seven, they weren't eight feet tall oh, Master yeah. Chiefs, you know? Like It's yeah. like with uh, Halo Wars, their take at StarCraft. Yeah, and yeah. It was a different game. Master Chief was in it at some point. Well, okay. Yeah, there was the Spark Wars. Was he Wars. playable? I believe so. Okay, that's cool. But, no, Halo, that... that was... See, so I've never... Me and my boys used to play Halo multiplayer, like, in, in like his, ba- his basement, like, you know, like, chucking fucking sticky grenades at each other. I, I love Halo for what it is, but I've never been the guy who's like, oh, I'm the hugest Halo fan. Now, that's one of the big reasons why I switched over to PlayStation from, from when I threw 60 first, because I, I, I don't play Halo or Gears of War, but well, that's neither here nor there. I digress. <laughs> Destiny 2, the reason why I bring up Halo, because Destiny 2 is Halo multiplayer. It's Halo MMO. And, and... You can say what you want about it, and whether you hate it or love it, it's fucking Halo MMO. It's Halo meets World of Warcraft. But I never played Destiny 1 because I wasn't a Halo fan. That's right. I remember you telling me about this. Yeah. Because you were telling me, like, have you played Destiny? I went, no, I'm not really a multiplayer person. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll play single player. I just, that's what I prefer. Yeah. But I've heard good things about Destiny. I know people that get very in-depth into it. Yeah. They yeah. mention all these weapons, I just go, Okay. Yeah, it's like, sure, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's a pistol. Yeah, it's a stack, it's a stack situation. Uh, sure, I don't, I don't know what that means. Uh, <laughs> what's uh, what's it, uh, Stern? The, oh, man. And I, I got deep into it. I played it for a while, and I got right below 300. 305 is the threshold. I think you can get some power boosters and get, like, 310 or 315 uh, light level for any Destiny fans out there. I played the shit out of it for two months straight. And then, just like every game comes with multiplayer games, your boys start to like, oh, no, like a new game came out, I'm, I'm not going to hop on this week, or I'm not going to hop on this day. And less and less of my friends started playing it, and I began playing it less and less. But I will never let that knock a game. And a lot, uh, that's one thing I will say real quick. I remember someone was like, oh, that game was fun for about, like, you know, like a month and a half, two months, and it's not fun anymore. And I'm like... I already call bullshit on a lot of games. I'm, and I'm like, but, like here's, but here's my thing about that. What do you really expect that many more? Like, not every game is the super transcendent games that you can play for five, six hundred. I mean, don't get me wrong. Those are my favorite games. My favorite games are the Fallout, the Skyrims, and Mass Effects. You know, like, that you can play over and over oh, and over again. Yeah, you know, like the GTAs. You know, those, those, those are my types of games. But not every game is that. Like, people, I think people have too high of expectations on their gaming. Yes. And that makes them judge games too harshly. Yes. Because uh, you'll go, like, oh, I got this new system. Like, Call of Duty's been great on it. Oh, yeah. I only played for a couple of hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like well, what, what, what did you expect? Like, and, and I'm okay with that. And I can make that dissension in my mind and not have a problem with it. So, I played Destiny 2 hardcore for a month and a half, two months. People dropped off from playing online. I dropped off playing online, but that doesn't hurt it. It made it into my top three. Yeah. So, Bill, what was your number two game of 2017? It is the one I keep trying to get you to play, okay. just because you know enough of the background of it. Uh, South Park, the factory as a whole. South, South Park. Yes. yes. This is always hard. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't get that form in the game. <laughs> um, it's an RPG. Okay. Action RPG. Okay. It takes place right after Stick of Truth. It's a uh, I want to say more story, well, more quest driven, like side quest driven. You get more, well, for me, you get all those little hidden things, like better weapons, better all that. And that's, those are the kind of games I like. Like with Fable. Yeah. I, yeah. I would just go off and 
It's on the map. Fine. Fuck it. I'm gonna find something. Okay. Cool. Cool. So it, it, it gives you some freedom to be yeah. able to like you know play like, question. And it's open world shit. and it's South Park game. But I do have one problem with it. When you watch the intro for every episode, they show everything that's in the game and go, that's not where that is. Uh, just go down that street. And go, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You motherfucker. <laughs> You're fucking on the head in this shit. <laughs> but no, it's definitely a hard uh, rated MA. Um, yeah. I can only imagine from my there's, there's no, there's no Nazi zombies or okay. Nazi zombie fetuses in this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, no Nazi zombies at all, actually. Really? Um, any, any, any Nazis and or zombies? N- no, but there are the what would seem like the Trump supporters. Okay, okay. Like so you get to pick like what your gender cl- is. And close enough that. to Nazis. Nazis. Yes, okay. you get to like pick your gender and all that. Like you get to pick at your cisgender and you come out of school like, oh look at the cisgender boy. We gotta Rich. teach him a lesson. <laughs> and apparently, no matter what you pick, they show up. I just go, all right. But yeah. it, it's just one of those games that's meant to piss off. Where like. You're more than aware we talked about the, yeah. the difficulty. Yes, 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 yes. That was that was a big thing when, that, that, when they got announced. How that pissed people off, I just kind of hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I know you laughed at it. Well, it, 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 it's South Park, and here's the thing, man. Yeah, South Park's been making fun of everything and oh, yeah. everyone for 20 plus years now. Damn, right. damn near 20 years now. It's not 20. That's why Isaac Hayes quit the show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I. For those of you that don't know, the difficulty setting in this game, you get to choose by adjusting the color of your skin, so you can be. Pale or darker. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and from what I've seen though, it doesn't affect anything, not any of the combat or any of that. I think the most I saw is it affects how much money you make. Which is true to life. <laughs> so so that, that's perfectly normal. That no, makes no, sense. It's, <laughs> it's just one of those games you would not expect to be great, but it is. Like you'll spend hours just playing it and you want to go, I want to replay it. That's awesome. That's that's really fucking cool. There's I heard I I never played Sega Dreams either. I've heard so many great things. The last South Park game I played was a South Park game for Super Nintendo. I thought you were gonna say N64. Oh, yeah, N64, yeah, yeah. yeah. N64. Yeah. I remember that one. We threw snowballs as weapons, and you could piss in the snowballs when they did more damage. Yeah. The parents of Philistology. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, 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 yeah. yeah. The Piranha Gun that I don't remember in any episode. Ever. Not at all. Not at all. The Moo Gun. I remember that. The Moo Gun. Yep, yep. But um, never mind. Number two. What's yours, sir? My number two would be uh, Breath of the Wild, Legend of Zelda, uh, which came out March 3rd for the Nintendo Switch. Um, so I was actually, um, I, I didn't get it or anything. I don't own a Switch. Um, but uh, there was a period of time where I was sick and I was, I was at the hospital for a couple days. And my, my buddy, uh, Locke, um, he came by and visited me. He was like, here, dude, like, borrow my Switch. You have something to play. And he let me borrow a Switch with Legend of Zelda. And I played the fuck out of it. <laughs> that... Was a, that game was like I haven't played a Zelda game since Ocarina of Time, and I'm one of the that one. I'm with one of the loser kids that I never even beat Ocarina of Time. I, I didn't either. There you go. Okay, there you go. We're, we're, we're I got to that fucking water temple. On <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, you made it to the water temple. I couldn't do it. Uh, I love Zelda. I have a respect for Zelda. I owned the gold NES cartridge Zelda when I was a kid, and you know I played the fuck out of it. Uh, but I, Zelda's, as much as I love RPGs and action RPGs, and Zelda's kind of like the pinnacle of early action RPG, yeah. I never could call myself, I'm a huge Zelda fan. I'm a Zelda fan. I, I Nothing negative to say about Zelda, all those games are great. But I, I'm not a Zelda like, fanboy. I, I, I can't call myself that. With that said... I couldn't either. I, yeah. I, I enjoy it. I see it as one of the first open world games. You well, on like an N64, that's yeah. an open world. Yeah. If you think about it. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, this is Broke Good Doors, yeah, with, uh, with Mario 3D. Yeah. And, um, and that. Yeah, that was, that was really, Mario 64, excuse me. Um, that was really what broke open the mold of open world and sandbox games, especially for Nintendo at that time. But Breath of the Wild, man, it, the art style was so great. It's kind of like halfway between cell shaded and you know rendered animation. I watched some of the clips. I kind of went, "Fuck, I wish I had a Nintendo." But yeah, and, and that's the thing. And that was probably my biggest gripe. I would say with the game, it nothing against Nintendo, but you buy a Nintendo system and you're getting into what exactly you know you're getting into. You're gonna play Nintendo games on your Switch. Because it's kind of handheld, it's kind of portable. You can, you know, port it directly to your TV screen. And how Nintendo does that is fucking awesome. But they're Nintendo games, you know. Like, 
what what other Switch gets like? Then they just get Doom and they have Doom. They get Skyrim. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Is that the newest one? Yeah, Skyrim's one of the newest one. Might be the newest big uh the biggest port that came over like, to Nintendo. So I mean I, I can't knock them. Nintendo's making millions of millions of dollars oh, yeah. off of parents buying shit for their kids, and that's what Nintendo has been for years, so I will never knock their company. And or they, begging my parents for a Donkey Kong 64. It, yeah. You know, they, that's, <laughs> that's what Nintendo does, and that's, you know, that's been their thing from that, to the Game Boys, to the DS's, 3DS's, and everything in between. But uh, Breath of the Wild was fucking solid. Go out and play that and get a chance. I don't know if you want to go buy a Switch just to play that game, because that's kind of the thing. It's, it's like, it was one of the launch games, and there weren't really that many amazing launch games for, for the Switch. It was kind of like, am I going to pay three ninety nine? For a system just to play yeah, Zelda. It's not like we don't have Blockbuster anymore and things where you can actually like rent a system for a night. Yeah. Right and now. like, it, 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 thumbs up to anyone that actually uses Gamefly. I've never met a single I've, person I've, yeah. that uses Gamefly. Um, but you have to still have to get the system anyway. Yeah. But if you get your hands on one, <clears throat> definitely play it. Um, okay, so before we, we get into our number one, I'm going to take a moment. So this episode is you know, sponsored by the Champagne of Beer. As we rang in the new year. But I got a little treat for us. Um, so this is our first episode. I um, I mentioned before I work at a brewery. I work at Broken Goblin Brewery. They make amazing, amazing crafts. It's located in uh, Bristol, uh, PA. And one bottle they do, we do a bottle release every year. And uh, you show how big of fucking nerds, the owners, and we all are. Every year we release a bottle as part of the Lonely Mountain series. Each bottle is named after a different member of the party from The Hobbit. And uh, 2017's release is Balin. Um, it's really cool, I don't know if you guys can see here, we colored in what the previous years were. So we got, um, Thorin was uh, 2014, I think it was, was the first one. Yeah, uh, 2015 was Nori, 2016 was Bomber, and you know, 2017 is Balin. So hopefully uh, we stay open for 11 more years. Maybe we can get all the way up to Bilbo. You guys went for a really brave marketing campaign for a movie that not many people still talk about. You know, and <laughs> it's geek shit, man. Like I'm you, surprised that movie didn't do as well as the first trilogy. I, I loved it. it. I mean, it, you know what? Okay, the orcs look different. Who gives a fuck? And here's my thing. I two, wish Cameron would have done it. Two Towers, in my opinion, has been the best Lord of the Rings Hobbit. It's the best one they've ever done. Yeah. And... They weren't going to give Two Towers a war. They just weren't going to do it. And, and I get uh, that. But when Return of the King came out, it was like, we can't not give Peter Jackson awards now. Like, we can't not give Peter Martinson awards. And that fucking swept the guy named Oscar Yeah, they, they were, what was it, 34 uh, nominations? Yeah, no, 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 it was 11. I think it was like 11 or, or, or 13. They, uh, they, over there, over what they won. Maybe uh, they didn't sweep. But they won like 11, or, or 11 plus, I, I can't equate. We even had some awesome glasses from Broken Goblin. You're actually going to be drinking out of the Balin glass. This is the Nori glass. Which one was Nori here? Like, the one with the huge ears? I think, you know what I think. I, 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 I don't remember. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a horrible nerd. I, 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 Nor, Nori was the one with the, the spear. The I said, spear. I said yeah, my favorite. Yeah. I'll rewatch it later tonight. And, you know. Yeah, but you know, there was the games for the first trilogy. Why didn't we get that for The Hobbit? Yeah, man. And I love the two towers, those fucking right. Two Towers games. Return of the so King was okay. Great. Yeah. Return of the King was weird. Remember like the game started, like, and this is what I thought was weird about it. It started off like half, yeah, halfway, no, 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 um, the third one. Uh, the yeah. King. It started off like, no, it started off where um, where you're getting, you're, re you're recruiting the ghost army. That was the beginning of the game, which was weird, because that's like a half hour, 40 minutes into oh, the yeah, Return right. of the King movie. And I remember like playing that, like, there was a lot more movie before this part of the game. I, I, well, I thought there was the level where you're playing Gandalf the White to start the game. Well, possibly. I mean, it, I mean, it's I also been, been like, like 12 years since that game came out, so I might just not be remembering correctly. But, uh... But it was, those were just such fun games. The one for uh, Xbox was terrible. Thank you, sir. Yes. Um, have you played Shadow of Mordor? I have. Or, or, and what's the, what's the newest one? Shadow of War. Shadow of War. Yeah. That is new. Ooh. Very good. Very, very good. Um, so, let's do it, man. What is your number one game of 2017? You already know it, because I text you all the goddamn time. <laughs> I say, what did you do here? <laughs> Mine is Mass Effect Andromeda. 
didn't do that well with those players. It only got a 71% on Metacritic, a 7.7 out of 10 on IGN, and a 6 out of 10 on GameSpot. But who the fuck is the GameSpot? Yeah, like I said, it's worth $1998. A PlayStation is worth what? 50 bucks right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 71% on Metacritic is a, is a middle of the road game. A 7.7 out of 10 on IGN, that's pretty good. Yeah. But um, I enjoyed it. You know I'm a Mass Effect fan. Yeah. I have been replaying the last three over the last six months with all the DLC finally, okay. which I still recommend for you. Yes, I still haven't touched them. I, oh I beat it, Tom, and I beat it. But I, I I, you, you beat your drama before me. I went, yeah. which road did you go? And yeah. I was like, ah, I'm going this road. You're like, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's too much shows. But um, it's, it's not like the old Mass Effect. This is a brand new story, brand new mechanics, brand new controls, all of that. The exploration system is completely different. Okay. I enjoyed that so much of it. Yes, yes. I, don't, I like how you have to go mining the planets anymore. Mm-hmm. That was just fucking annoying. Yeah. And, well, and, and they changed how you could mine, and I like that you didn't... Now yeah. you, didn't, you didn't need no. to mine, you know? If you wanted to get more shit, you had to do it. But, like, the first one I remember, really, you were, like, forced to mine to do it, get shit done. And it was like, oh, my God, like, like how I do this? Just how horrible it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Prologue, yeah, got yeah. it. But even the story, people were saying it's glitchy and all over the place. I thought the story was great. It was, I know this game was uh, terrible. It reminded me somewhat of No Man's Sky from video games. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. I remember that being just a flop. No, um, man, I'm glad I didn't pay money for that. I, I, have, I know someone who did, and yeah. he hated himself for same, it. Same, same. <laughs> but um, the combat was good. Yeah. The characters in it were good. Like, I... Myself chose PB as my romantic interest. Yeah, I, chose. Well, it, it, it was funny because, like, so in the gameplay, and anyone knows Mass Effect, the one big thing about it is that you end up having relationships with uh, the, the, the characters in your crew. On your Male ship, or female. And, or alien or not. Oh, yeah. And different species of aliens. Anyone that knows me knows I love my uh, scaly blue uh, men. I, I love uh, Garrus McCary. And I, I ran a fem chef, a female uh, shepherd, through the Mass Effect trilogy. With it. So I tell my friends, and they're either like, like wow, you ran a fem chef, or like, I, I'm totally not surprised Reese ran a fem chef. Like, <laughs> it took it. And uh, I knew as soon as I met Garrus and his scaly blue calibrating self, I just I fell in love. And I, 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 hooked, I hooked them up with him. But I knew the first time you told me that, I went, Wait, Garrus is gay? <laughs> yeah, no, see, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, no, not from a fem chef. Not from a fem chef. But uh, I didn't go with Peeves. I, you get the option to have, like, straight up, like, like no strings attached sex with PB. And I was like, yeah, I, okay. Like, I, I'm totally down for that. I, I wrote a male The sex scenes were a lot uh, more graphic this time, right? It wasn't just that stupid, uh, like, PG-13 where they kind of... And then it the black. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like that, just, oh, they're there. Yeah, like, and... No, he, he, turn camera. <laughs> well, I'm not saying you saw insertion and all that. <laughs> yes, it was you hard, know, hardcore. <laughs> there's probably a mod for that somewhere. <laughs> I, I wouldn't put it against anyone. But I really enjoyed this game, even though it was panned by everyone. They're saying there's glitches. Yes, there's some glitches. Yeah, you're yeah. driving the Nomad around, you're going at full speed, and you kind of, the game just stops, and you keep going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sucks, but... Now, alright, so, I there was plenty of negatives with the game. I personally enjoyed the fuck out of playing Andromeda. I'm replaying it now. And my, my thing was, it was just so awesome to be back anywhere near the Mass Effect universe. Yes. Even if it wasn't the same world, because th- this game actually takes place in the a- Andromeda galaxy, they, they've left uh, um, the, Milky, the Milky Way galaxy to, to try and inhabit a new galaxy, because after the Reaper War... There are uh, mentions of old characters. There's mention of Liara. Well, we are, there's, there's video messages. Yeah. There's audio recordings. with Tali, Liara... There's um, a mention of humanity going to war. Yeah. Somewhere, it's a hard one to find, but it's yeah. there. Um, 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 they, they bring up the... the, the, the there's Krogan. Everyone's back. There's Krogan. There's, there's uh, Asari, you know, um, um, the, uh, um, the Morden's race. Uh, 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 Solus? Uh, no, Morden Solus, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Morden Solus. Yeah, uh, uh, shit. That's a damn shame. I'm sure how big, big of geeks we are, but we can't even remember all the Solarian. 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 There we go, there we go. And then, uh, and then of course, uh, yeah, there's some new species. Yeah, and there's some new species. We won't spoil anything. And, you know, they, they talk about the Reaper War, and, you know, they talk about the, the, you know, the Collector and everything of that nature. Um, but, but, but I've already talked with you about Mass Effect 2 is probably my favorite game of all time with all the DLC. I, and I just picked up the first Mass Effect 
by accident at CompUSA on sale. <laughs> you're dating yourself. That's <laughs> what I got. It was for five, 15 bucks in a little bin for Xbox 360. Took it home, I went, what the fuck is this? Instantly into it. But, um, enough about my uh, favorite game, which I'm still replaying yeah. and loving it every day. Sir, you're number one. My number one is an under the radar gem. It's not a big ticket game, it wasn't a big publisher game. It was Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, which was a PlayStation exclusive, I, I would like to say it was, but it was an indie game. And I, I fucked up my notes, I was supposed to find the, the company that made it to give them props. Um, I did not, but it was released August 8th. Um, Steam gave it 9 out of 10. IGN gave it 9 out of 10. And it ranked 81 on Metacritic, which is really fucking high. Um, this game... When we, like, we talked about The Walking Dead game uh, earlier, uh, about playing a story and, you know, kind of like the difference between games and art. People always talk about that stuff when you talk about like, the old games like Ico and uh, Shadow of the Colossus and um, uh, other extremely well done games. Like, this was a work of art. You, you kind of, it was almost like playing a movie and, and not, because there is action and you actually, you know, so you're a Viking girl named Senua and it starts off with you more or less going down what would be considered like the river sticks like and you have the head of your boyfriend in a satchel in your, on your belt and you're looking for his soul that's trapped in purgatory like viking purgatory and because his death is weighing heavily on your heart and senua like has been told by her mother she had these visions she had the ability to like you know be a seer as for any fans of the show vikings or viking lore there were people that were seers um, that, they, that they believed in and this game was just there was i've never played a more anxiety ridden video game in my entire life and, yeah. it, and this is why you would love this this is why you got to get your hands on it in some respect even if you play on pc so every time you die in the game well you, you get infected by this evil spirit called the rock and every time you die, it starts to creep from your fingertips up to your neck. So if you die, it'll be a little cutscene and it'll creep up a little bit. And if you die, it'll creep up a little bit again. If it touches your brain, you restart the game, no saves whatsoever. So every fight is the fight of your life. Like, Holy shit. It, like you, you, when you get into battles with people, you are locked in so hard. You're like, I can't die, I can't die, I can't die. It, you know, it's, it's a very big puzzle game. And after, you know, you get to a, a, a place, you use your sight vision in the game, and you unlock doors and things of that nature, and then you'll, you'll battle spirits and things of that nature. It, it's it's so much fun. From how you just described it, I'm picturing Dark Souls mixed with God of War. Dark Souls is probably going to take that whole no save. We yeah. are. <sighs> we, got, we got strong opinions about Dark Souls. We, we'll get into that on future episodes. Fuck, <laughs> Fuck that game. <laughs> You're supposed to die in the first boss. That's, that's yeah, another, I, yeah. another fucking day. I, 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 <laughs> but it sounds... I am interested. I kind of want to play game play video of this. It's um, really good, man. It's really good. And, it, and it, it's difficult, but it's really not. And it's, it's an indie game, so you're going to beat it in like 12 hours. 12, 13 hours. Not even if you ran through. Well, what reminds me of God of War from it is... If you remember, like, God of War 1 and 2, there were the puzzle games that little ones in between you had to solve. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's what reminds me of that, and then mix that with Dark Souls. That's, it, this one sounds quite interesting. Well, and God of War is now going Viking, but... Um, yeah, yeah, and that too. Yeah, and and the, the story is so great. The the animation, the lighting, the lighting is really key. The sound uh, elements in it, which that means, like, you know, that means a lot to, like, to me in gaming. You know, if you can nail those type of things and have them be huge elements of your gameplay, which hopefully does. There's a lot of mini games. You'll play a mini game where you're blind and there's, like, a light in the background and you have to navigate your way to the light and in these rooms with pillars and stuff. But there's also these creatures that you can't see, and they look like fucking blurbs, and like, they're like blurb, it, dude, it's wild, and you have to like, maneuver around them, it's really a sick game, it's, it's kind of a, I, I would almost kind of call it survival horror, but it's action element, you have a sword, and what, what's cool about it is, when you, when you're navigating, you can't pull your sword out, you can't just pull your sword out and start swinging it randomly, you only draw your sword when there's monsters around. So monsters will come out, you draw your sword, and you're like, oh, I'm now in a battle mode. Okay. And when you're not in that mood, you're in hunt and seek mode. It, 
Dude, it was very ingenious. This company, I, I forget the name, but check out Hellblade Send You a Serious sac- Send You a Sacrifice because it is it was a knockout of the park. Is that like one of those games you just run around and just chop it? Yeah, 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 it's not that game. Did they find that type of Easter egg? Like, if I hit nope, this last time, nope. you're not you're not linked running through smashing pots. You know, it's, oh. it's, yeah, you're not doing that. You're not doing that. But there are Easter eggs. Just think, you know, there's collectibles. It's it's a game. It's, oh, yeah. and they came out 2017, so it's got all that little shit. But uh, that man, that that was by far my number one. Um, so uh, I mean, our uh, list just differed very greatly. They really did. <laughs> that, that's awesome. I'm I'm glad that they did. And I like when you were hiding yours from me, and right, I was like, oh, I know what two years are. And like, Mass Effect's not on here. Yo, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it was it was it was really cool to see how I, differing our. Wait, wait, how many did I guess out of yours? I think I guessed one. Yeah. Well. I guess Destiny. Destiny, right? yeah, you guess Destiny. Because I was ranting and raving about Destiny. That was, Destiny was really cool because, like I said, I'm not a Halo guy, and it was fun to get into that style of game. Because it was fucking fun. That was a fun fucking game. Are you going to start playing Call of Duty online now? I bought World War II, and, and I, mean, I, I mean, I guess I mean, we can segue right into uh, to what are you playing. So, um, uh, so, so what, what are you playing right now? Are you still just replaying fucking uh, South Park right now? No, I finished South Park. I'm uh, waiting for the DLC. I don't know what's coming. I'm so, somewhat playing, replaying through Andromeda, okay. but I bought the Telltale Collection. It's episode one, or season cool. one, season two, yeah. Michonne, 400 Days, New Frontier. I went, fuck, yes, mm-hmm. I'm in. Yeah. And it was only about 35 bucks. I went, really? Yeah, that's horrible. I should have waited for that, because I bought all those things independently. I bought Michonne, I bought 400 Days, right when they came out, and stuff like that. That's why I went, I just bought all this in one. I just wanted to keep it on searching through files. And all yeah. Right. But, uh, what else are you playing? All right, are, so... Are you just playing... Well, and so right now I I bought COD uh, World War Two, and the, the the shittiest part about this is as big of a gamer I am, I haven't fucking played any video games in like a month. I really haven't. COD World War Two is the last game I bought. I have games purchased and backlog that I need to play. I want to go back and play Horizon once I get a chance. Yeah. No, what are you gonna ask? What are you gonna ask? Well, what did you think of COD so far? I'm iffy on it. All right, yeah. so. It's another Call of Duty. Yes. It's another Call of Duty. But it, it's... When did they start going, like, modern? Like oh, good God, yeah. And, 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 well, I mean, well, Modern War... Once they started going advanced modern. What is modern after, Warfare 2 was fine. What's the last Big Red 1? Yeah. We went way back to Xbox. Yeah. Okay, that was probably yeah, the last yeah. stated one. Yeah. I was, well, now... Well, because Treyarch does the... They've done the, the old school ones. They, yeah. They did World at War. World at War was the last oh, yeah. classic. Yeah, about that one. And then even um, Black Ops, the first Black Ops, was in the Cold War, which was That's the true. 70s and 80s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. So right after oh, they all just game and stuff blur like together. Yeah, just <laughs> but um, World War II, the storyline, awesome. I, I like the single player campaign, which is, I am a stickler for a game having a good single player campaign. Multiplayer is fun, multiplayer is an addition to your game. Yes. Companies need to recognize that. It's an addition to your game. Have a solid single player story. It, even if your focus is only multiplayer, like COD and, and your Destiny and stuff like that, have a fun single player. Oh, yeah. like, like, at least make something enjoyable that I can just sit around and have fun with. And then have one of those fun single players, like, oh, I'll just fuck people up in multiplayer. Yes. But then you go into multiplayer and go, nope, fuck. Yeah, no, nope, I'm wrecked. Yeah, I got no. wrecked. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, so that game. It's, it's solid. The servers for World War II fucking suck. Oh, yeah. Which doesn't make any sense because COD is the biggest goddamn multiplayer game ever. It's, and, it's, that's not EA, is it? No. No, no, EA's Battlefield. Okay. EA's Battlefield. Oh, no, Battlefront. Ba- Battlefront and Battlefield. Battlefield oh. is uh, the the war game and they Battlefront sure. is the Star Wars game. They sure are typecasting things. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and, you know and I didn't even get Battlefront 2 and, and there's a lot of bullshit going around with Battlefront 2 and having to pay and get make your character stronger and give them money and people are pissed and then they said they weren't going to do it but they're going to do it later. I didn't jump into Battlefront 2 fucking bandwagon. I bought Battlefront 1 like a year after it released like 20 bucks at Walmart and I fucking loved it because I'm a Star Wars fan. So, so like, I would say I would start mentioning like other Star Wars games at some point but we've talked about in the future we're going to do the list of our favorite Star Wars games. Our favorite Star Wars so games. I'm going to save yeah. that. Save, save it. Even you went holy fuck that's a that's a callback. Yeah, that's a callback. And, 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 and one of mine is even a further callback to oh, Star Wars, yeah. remember? So, oh, yeah. so we, have, we have some good conversation. To, um, but speaking about backlogging, I keep using Humble Bundle, where you get like 15 games. What's that? Yeah. Like, I got the whole first Telltale thing, like, not just Walking Dead, I got like 
Batman, uh, oh, Game shit. of Thrones, and all that. Tell me Wolf, the, Wolf, uh, Wolf Among Us came with that. Yes. I've never played Wolf Among Us, and it's such a good game. I've never played uh, Tales Beyond the Borderlands. I, Tales I, the Borderlands. I don't and here's the thing I've never played Borderlands, guys. I played it at a friend's house, but I've never beat it. Have you ever played Borderlands? I have. I got it. I heard those games are amazing. They, they are. What I played are amazing. I've never beat them. A uh, buddy I used to work with, he got me started on it, and uh, I got really far into it, then I just kind of fell off with it. Because yeah. I didn't like. I did my whole thing for a couple months, for like the whole last year I was going to go, I'm going to play this game, play this series, this series, this series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got partway through the first one, then just went, ah, fuck it. Yeah, and I played yeah. through all the recent Batmans, but that'll be a whole other episode yeah, yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because those are great games in themselves. And, 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 and be real quick, I've never played a lot of, I played the Arkham Asylum, the very first one, for a little bit. Didn't finish it, and I didn't jump on until Arkham Knight, until the last one. And I played the fuck out of Arkham Knight. Actually, I played Arkham Knight during this during 2017 it's not a 2017 release but i played it and beat it got a dlc beat a dlc 100 percent in everything in the game except oh. for the goddamn riddler i was about to say, oh to say if you 100 the riddler <laughs> i will just give you my profile and you can no i don't have time to find 250 fucking riddles if it was 100 i yeah, might that's, do that's it fair. 250 oh man it's rough it's rough no, back to what humble bundle is like okay yeah. they, they have like different packages and all that like sometimes they have like the resident evil series and all that Oh, you okay. pay like fifteen bucks, you get like ten games. It's a really good deal. The games have been out for like two or three years, but yeah. still you get a whole brand new set of games for a decent price. Humble right. bundle. I will check out check out. And I recommend bundle. it to you guys, humblebundle.com. They yeah. have I think it changes every two weeks. Okay. It's fucking awesome. I bought so many games off of there that I haven't really played yet. That's something else that's added to the list. It's added to the list. Um Man, dude, I, yeah, but like I said, man, that was that was really fun. Uh, this is a great first episode. We hope you guys uh, enjoyed it as much as we did enjoy recording it. Um, uh, thank you guys for hanging out with us. Uh, much thanks to uh, the great company Miller for the champagne of beers. Oh, uh, yeah, welcome back. Really, really much love to Broken Goblet for uh, the amazing uh, battle in uh, the Little Mountain Series bottle release. Cheers. Thanks, sir. Yeah, 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 very much. God, so yeah. So, I mean, guys, uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us for this week's episode. Uh, make sure you check us out on our website, uh, www.gamingbuzz.com. That might be where you're watching us right now. Um, you can always find us on Twitter. We're at Gaming Buzz. You can see us on Facebook, Gaming Buzz. Um, you can uh, email us at any time. If you have any questions, you can email Bill at Gaming Buzz, Reese at Gaming Buzz, or if you just have generic questions just for the show, like how, like how we run the show, we use the record or anything like that, info at Gaming Buzz or any questions. Anyone that has any type of uh, things they want to send in, like, yo, future episodes. What's, yes. What's what do you want to see us talk about? Yes. Please, please. Cause in this, a top three format. In a top three format. You got to, we, we're going to get too drunk to be able to focus on anything more we, than three. We put a lot of thought into what, the, we went from top five when we had to cut it down to me. I don't know if you can already tell, we're sitting here trying to edit ourselves as we go. Yeah. <laughs> we, we like to talk. If That's you, why I keep looking down there. going, stop talking. Just stop talking. All right, here's the next note. Keep Move on. <laughs> move to the next move. Move to the next but, um, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, this is only going to get better as it goes. This is episode one. Uh, we're gonna have more beers. We're gonna have different types of alcohol. It's not always gonna be beer. Not sometimes, always beer. Sometimes wine. Sometimes sangria. Sometimes margaritas. Who the yeah, fuck knows? Who knows? We might even do absinthe one night. Who oh, knows how the fuck that's gonna go? And shit's gonna get real weird. <laughs> <laughs> but um, thank you guys so much. This is gonna be a lot more fun. I promise. <laughs> uh, uh, for our, from Reese and Bill, this is Gaming Buzz signing off. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Sweet. Now I can get really drunk. Yeah, like, all right, now time to get hammered. <laughs> Where the fuck you put that vodka? Oh, okay. right here, hold on, hold on. What the fuck? Drinking the fucking never hot life. <laughs> <laughs>